Yashodanandana Braja Janaranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Janabala Bhagiri Bharatai Gopi Janabala Bhagiri Bharatai Yashodanandana Prajatanaranjana Yashodanandana 
Krishna Pristaya Bhutale, Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namane, Namaste Sarasati Devi Goravani Pricharine, Nirvisesha Shanyavadi Paschacha Deshatari. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskritam 
Naram Chaiva Narottamam Daivim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mujiraya Nasta Praeshu Vabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtaki So this morning we're going to speak about the importance of hearing the pastimes of Lord Krishna. And so we're going to speak from a verse from the 10th canto Srimad Bhagavatam. And this is chapter number 23, text number 33. So those of you who have your mobile phones, you can find out that verse. Shravanat Dashanat Dhyanam Mai Bhavo Anukirtanat Natata Pratiyata Tato Grahan Dravana Dashana Dhyanan Mai Payonu Kirtana Natata Sanikarjina Pratiyata Tato Grahan Dravana Dashana Dhyanam Mai Bhavonu Kirtana Natata Sanikashina Pratiyata Tato Grahan Shravana Dashana Dhyanan Mai Bhavonu Kirtana Natata Sanikarshena Pratiyata Tato Grahan Yeah. 
marriages. Shravana, by hearing, Darshanat, by seeing the deity, form, yeah. Dhyanat, by meditation, Mai, for me, Baba, love, Anukirtanat, by chanting my name and quality and qualities na not data in the same way sami kirshana by liter by literal proximity pratiyata return tata Therefore, Grehan, to your homes. Translation. It is by hearing about me, seeing my deity form, meditating upon me, and chanting my names and glories that love for me develops, not by physical proximity. Therefore, please go back to your homes. You can repeat. It is by hearing about me, seeing my deity form, meditating upon me, and chanting my name and glories that love for me develops, not by physical proximity. Therefore, please go back to your homes. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupakadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Bandeham Shri Guru Shri Yatapada Kamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavam Stya Shri Rupam Sakrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Bitam Tam Sajevam Sadvayatam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakanitamscha He Krishna Karana Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kanchana Korange Radhe Vrinda Vinishwari Vrishabhanustate Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kaupa Taruvyascha Kripa Sindhu Bayevacha Patita Nam Pavane Pyo Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Kadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So the verse we just read is from the uh, pastime of the wives of the Brahmanas, the Dvijapatnis, and how they got the mercy of Lord Krishna. Before we talk about that, we want to explain about the importance of hearing about Krishna, that in Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna began his instructions to Arjuna by defeating Arjuna's arguments for not fighting, that Lord Krishna wanted to dismantle all of Arjuna's arguments in taking part of the battle of Kurukshetra. And then Lord Krishna went on to speak the yoga ladder. And we see the progression there in the first six chapters of the Bhagavad Gita, how the Lord talks about Karmakanda and then Karma Yoga and then Jnana Yoga, Dhyana Yoga, and coming to Bhakti Yoga. And at the end of the sixth chapter, Lord Krishna has described that of all yogis, the highest yogi is the one who is absorbed in devotional service, who is thinking of Krishna within himself and engaged in his transcendental loving service. He is considered the, the topmost of all yogis. And then Lord Krishna begins the seventh chapter. And remember the middle portion of the Bhagavad Gita, chapter seven to chapter 12 are describing devotional service because Lord Krishna has established that bhakti is the top of all yogas. It's the culmination of all yoga practice. So the Lord begins chapter seven by just speaking about the importance of hearing. And he says to Arjuna, now hear from me, O Arjuna, how by practicing yoga in full knowledge of me, you can know me in full free from doubt. So Lord Krishna began the seventh chapter introducing us to bhakti yoga by speaking about hearing, that hearing is the first step of bhakti yoga. We need to hear and we, we should hear regularly. It shouldn't be irregular. You, just like when you're taking a medicine, you take it regularly. You have to take it, you know, according to the physician's instructions. So similarly, hearing the topics of Lord Krishna, hearing the glories of Lord Krishna is like a medicine which can counteract the contamination of materialistic life. And we have to hear regularly. In Chaitanya Charitamrita, Krishna Das Kaviraj describes how the living entity becomes fortunate when the seed of devotion is planted into his heart. That we have been traveling through many different universes. Krishna Das Kaviraj describes Brahmanda, Brahmite, Konya Bhagyavanji. So we've been traveling through the different Brahman, Brahmanandas and when we become fortunate, then we get the Bhakti Lata Bij. Guru Krishna Prasadi Pai Bhakti Lata Bij. This, this seed, this Bij, this Bhakti Lata Bij, the seed of the creeper of devotion, this is given to us by the grace of spiritual teachers. That is when we become fortunate. So the seed is planted, but it's not just planting only the seed. 
that's not enough. That doesn't bring us to perfection. We have to water the seed. Just as you want to grow plants, you want to grow some flowers or so on. Maybe you have a garden or you have a field or something and you want to cultivate some crops. You have to put some water there. There has to be some irrigation, some means somehow or other, you're going to water that seed so that the seed can sprout and grow nicely. So that watering process is crucial for the development of the seed. And similarly, in our cultivation of bhakti, devotion, we need to hear regularly topics of Krishna. And regularly means daily. Just like you clean your teeth. You don't clean your teeth once a week, right? You don't wash your hands and face once a week. And similarly, when it comes to chanting and hearing topics of Krishna, it has to be regular. We have to do it daily, make it a daily program. This is the Krishna conscious program. Hear regularly the topics of Krishna. This is the watering process. When we're pouring the water on the seed, then the seed can germinate and grow nicely and can grow on, go on to grow. And the idea is that our devotion for Krishna should grow through the coverings of the material world and penetrate into the spiritual sky and ultimately take shelter at the lotus feet of the personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna. When the creeper takes shelter at the lotus feet of Krishna, still we want that there should be fruit. There should be some fruit. There should be some flowers and fruit on that creeper. That is required. And in order to achieve that, there has to be this regular hearing and chanting. Hearing and chanting is like the watering process. But as we are watering the seed, then so many different weeds will also grow up. They will also sprout and they have to be removed. Therefore, one has to be very cautious about what is actually the seed and what is the weed. If you cannot recognize the plant from the weed, then you may make the mistake of pulling out the plant and let the weeds grow. And this is similarly a problem in the practice of bhakti yoga, that we, we're, we're trying to practice bhakti yoga, but we don't recognize what are the weeds and what is the actual plant. And by mistake, we may destroy our own progress in devotional service. Therefore, very important that we keep in the association of devotees, because with the association of devotees, then we will learn what is actually the wheat and what is the plant. If we go away from the association of devotees and try to practice independently, we will get difficulties, we'll run into problems. This is the fact. So we encourage all the devotees, take care, follow the process nicely, and hear and chant regularly topics of Lord Krishna. Srimad Bhagavatam describes the power of hearing topics of Krishna. Srimvatam Swakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana. Ridi antas tohi abhadrani vidunoti surit satam. Sri Krishna, the personality of Godhead, situated in the heart of all living entities, cleanses the desire for material enjoyment from those who relish his message, which is in itself virtuous when properly heard and chanted. 
So by hearing the topics of Krishna carefully, we can remove material desires, the material desires which are there. And certainly we all have material desires. That's why we have, that's why we have a birth in this material world. If we had no material desires, we wouldn't be in this world. We would be in the spiritual world. But because our hearts are not so pure, we do have material desires. But the vaccine or the remedy to cure these desires, to remove them, is hearing the topics of Lord Krishna. So this is why Srila Prabhupada spent so much time writing the books to give us, just so that we could spend our time hearing about Krishna and taking uh, pleasure in hearing the pastimes of Lord Krishna. So many books Prabhupada wrote for us, and we want to study them all carefully. We begin with the Bhagavad Gita, we go on to Srimad Bhagavatam, and we go on from there to read Chaitanya Charitamrita. And if you've read all of Srila Prabhupada's books, then we're very fortunate that their Prabhupada's disciples have written other books. For example, Prabhupada did not complete the Srimad Bhagavatam. Prabhupada only translated the first part of the 10th canto, Srimad Bhagavatam. So the remaining part of the 10th canto and the 11th and the 12th canto, they were completed by Prabhupada's disciples. And then other books have also been given to us by Prabhupada's disciples, books which Prabhupada wants us to read, which he recommends us, books like the Sandarbhas by Jiva Goswami and the Brihad Bhagavatamrita by Sanatana Goswami. So these kind of books, they're very important for us, very nice for us to, to hear and to relish. But first, we want to study Srila Prabhupada's books. That is crucial. We have to start in the proper manner and start by reading Prabhupada's books and studying them. And to help you understand these books, because sometimes it's not very easy for us. In the beginning, we find it a little difficult to help us study these books. We have courses like Bhakti Shastri, Bhakti Vaibhav, Bhakti Vedanta. How many of you have studied Bhakti Shastri? Oh, not very many. So more of you need to study Bhakti Shastri. It's a very good start to help you understand the Bhagavad Gita and the Ishopanishad, Nectar of Devotion, Nectar of Instruction. These books, very nice. We are teaching these classes online. You can enroll online and, and study these books. Uh, people all over the world are taking the opportunity to take part in these classes and to study the books. So uh, we encourage all of you, find out more about these courses which go on. We're teaching uh, all over the world, it's going on. Classes go on online. We also invite people come to Mayapur and you are Vrindavan, and you can stay there, and you can study there. But I know, I know it's not so easy for everyone to get away for three or four months to come and live in the Holy Dham. And that's why we have these classes online. And many of the classes are just like on the weekend, on the weekend, Saturday, Sunday, one Saturday, one class, Sunday, one class, and then you have time Think about what you've learned, you know, next week, another class. And in this way, you can study the Bhakti Shastri. Actually, how many of you are initiated? Much more, right? So those people who want to get second initiation, 
they have to study Bhakti Shastri. At least His Holiness Jaipataka Swami Maharaj has a, that standard, that if you want to get second initiation from him, he will ask you, have you studied the Bhakti Shastri yet? So it's like a prerequisite to the second initiation, to the Brahminical initiation. Uh, all right, so we're speaking about the hearing process. And we were reading here how Lord Krishna instructed the wives of the Brahmanas, the Dvijapatnis. Right? Dvijapatnis is described also in, the, in that song, the Vrindavan Mahimamrita. He mentions about the, the Dvijapatnis. So the wives of the Brahmanas, they're great devotees of Lord Krishna. Their husbands are not very devotees. Quite a common situation in the world today. We often find, you know, many parts of the world, not so much in India, but outside of India, it's quite common. We get a lot of ladies and very less men. Men not so religious, not so much inclined to hear and to take up the devotional life. Anyway, Lord Krishna was there in Vrindavan one morning and the cowherd boys were with him and they had left home early. They did not, they had not taken any breakfast and they were thinking, how will we get our breakfast? And then they saw that there were these brahmanas nearby who were doing a yagya. And in the course for, in preparation for the yagya, a lot of foodstuffs have been prepared by their wives. So Lord Krishna suggested to the cowherd boys that you could go over there, go and ask these brahmanas. And, and you can give them my name. You can tell them, you know, that Lord Balaram is here and that we haven't taken any breakfast and ask them, they can give some foodstuffs for us. And so the cowherd boys went there and they were very respectful. They offered obeisances to the brahmanas and then they told the brahmanas that Krishna and Balaram are there and they're hungry and they haven't taken any breakfast. And what did the brahmanas do? They just ignored them. They just pretended they didn't hear anything. And they just continued doing their rituals. So the cowherd boys were quite disappointed. And they came back and told Lord Krishna what had happened. And Lord Krishna laughed. He wasn't upset. Because Lord Krishna knows. He knew these brahmanas are not going to give. He is, he is in the heart of the brahmanas as well. And he understands what is their nature, what is their mentality. These brahmanas were karma kandi brahmanas. In other words, they were performing rituals for material benefit. The yagya they were actually doing was with the idea that they could go to the heavenly planet. So to want, to want to go to the heavenly planets, that is not the aspiration of a devotee. Devotees are not interested to go to heaven, all right? We're not interested to be demigods. We want to go back to Godhead. We want to go far beyond heaven, to go back to the spiritual world. But these brahmanas, they were thinking we will go to heaven. In, in, on, in heaven, we will enjoy opulence, long life, so many nice things about heaven. So they wanted to go there to enjoy. And they were performing their yoga with this intention. So the coward boys came back and told Lord Krishna, they didn't even respond to us. They just ignored us. And Lord Krishna's laughing. Don't worry, it's all right. You go to the wives of the brahmanas. He said, they are 
my devotees and they will come immediately. You just go and tell them I'm here. You don't even have to tell them I'm hungry. Just go and tell them I'm here and watch. Just wait and see how they react. So the cowherd boys went over there to the homes of the brahmanas. The wives were there in their homes and they were, they'd been preparing the different foodstuffs for the yagya and so on. And the cowherd boys came there and they told the wives of the brahmanas, Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram are there. They're over there just now. And when the, the wives of the brahmanas heard, their eyes opened wide and Krishna, Balaram, both here. And they were so happy and they grabbed all the food they could and they carried it and they came running to see Krishna and Balaram. Why were they so eager? They'd heard about Krishna and Balaram. Where did they hear? Well, you know, the ladies go to the market, you know, the ladies in Vrindavan, at least the ladies in Vrindavan, they don't work, you know, they don't go to the office, you know, they're not, they haven't got jobs like that, you know, they're housewives. And they go to the market and they talk to the other ladies in the market. And the other ladies are talking about, did you hear about this little boy, the son of Yashoda in Braja? Do you know what he did? He killed this demon Putana. And then, he, you know, now he's growing up. He's a cowherd boy. And he killed these other demons, this big demon, Bakasura, and then Trinavata. And oh, so, he, so they, they'd been hearing regularly about all the activities of Lord Krishna. And they were hearing how wonderful Lord Krishna is. And he's with his brother, also Balaram. And they're so attractive. They're so beautiful. So the ladies were all talking. This, this wonderful child, the child of Yashoda. She's the wife of Nanda Baba. And everybody knew Nanda Baba because Nanda Baba, he's got a big herd of cows, right? Nine like cows. So they're very eager. Oh, we want to see this child. He must be really wonderful. Of course, women like children. But they, when they heard about this child, Krishna, this is a very special child. And so when they heard from the cowherd boys how Krishna is there, immediately they went running to see Krishna and Balaram. And when they met with Krishna and Balaram, then they told Lord Krishna and Balaram that they didn't want to go back again. They didn't want to go home again. <laughs> they said, we just want, we'll just stay here in the forest. We will just be here in the forest. But Lord Krishna, however, he told them, well, just a minute. <laughs> this is not quite correct. He said, you know, I'm the son of a cowherd boy and you're the wives of Brahmanas. So, you know, we're not very good match for each other. You're Brahmanas, you're Brahmanis. And I'm a cowherd, the son of a cowherd. I'm just a cowherd boy. So you cannot just talk about having a relationship with me. What will people think? that you gave up your husbands and you've come to a cowherd boy. No, no, this is not proper. And, but Lord Krishna is telling them, you should go home. And by going home, in, you will feel separation from me. And in separation from me, your love for me will increase. Actually, the wives of the brahmanas were like the gopis. Just like the gopis, when Krishna would call them, the wives, the gopis would come running. Krishna would play on his flute and the gopis would leave everything. Even if it only put on one earring, they wouldn't even bother to put on the other earring. They just go 
because they thought Krishna, Krishna is calling us. And they got to the forest in the dead of night. And then Krishna tells them, oh, why have you come here? What are you doing here? You're young girls, young ladies. You shouldn't be in the forest at night. So Krishna did the same thing with these wives of the Brahmanas. He was say, saying, well, what are you doing here? Why you come here? Uh, this is Lord Krishna. He's testing his devotees. He wants to test them to see, are they really sincere? Are they really genuine? He wants to see how they're going to respond. So of course, the gopis, they didn't go home. They stayed there with Krishna and danced rasa dance. However, Lord Krishna sent the wives of the brahmanas, he sent them home, that you should go home. And by going home, you can remember me more and you will feel more love for me. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and all of his followers, they follow this mood of the gopis. The mood of the gopis, vipralamba seva, service in separation. This is the mood of the, the greatest devotees of Lord Krishna, that they serve Lord Krishna in separation. And Lord Krishna is encouraging these wives of the brahmanas also, that you chant my name, you worship my deity form and you hear my glories. And in this way, you will develop love, not just by being close to me, not just by physical proximity. Just like Srila Prabhupada, we learn there are two ways to serve the Guru. There is the Vani and there is the Vapu. How many of you have taken the disciple course? ISKCON disciple course? Yes, everybody should take the disciple course. It's very important to understand the basic principles of Krishna consciousness. Take the ISKCON disciple course. These courses, we go to a lot of trouble to organize and arrange these courses to educate the devotees, because we have to get education. We don't just want to come and ring the bell and say, nobody taught me anything. Nobody ever teaches me anything. We are not like that. You may go to some temples, they never teach you anything, but you come here, we want to teach you, right? That's why we have these classes regularly. And we have these courses, we have to learn, we have to educate ourselves. And then by learning, we will never forget Krishna. If you learn this knowledge, then you'll never give up Krishna consciousness. So uh, Lord Chaitanya and his followers, they worship Krishna in that mood of separation from Krishna. And we worship Srila Prabhupada in a similar mood, in the mood of separation. There is the Vani and there is the Vapu. The Vapu, his physical form, and the Vani, his instructions. And we get his instructions. His instructions are eternal. The Vapu is not eternal. This the body of the spiritual teacher is not eternal. It's going to perish, but the instruction remains with us. So we have to learn to take shelter of the instructions. And similarly with Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna was present on the planet 5,000 years ago. So some fortunate souls, like the wives of the brahmanas and the gopis, they had that loving relationship with Krishna. 
not everyone could recognize Lord Krishna as the supreme personality of Godhead. But Lord Krishna gave his vani, he gave his instructions. When he spoke the Bhagavad Gita, it was not just for Arjuna to hear, but it was for everyone to hear. And that is why Srila Vyasadeva has recorded the Bhagavad Gita within the Mahabharat. That we all have to hear from Lord Krishna. And by hearing, then we get rid of the dirt in the heart. Lord Krishna purifies the heart by his transcendental instructions. Now, the wives of the Brahmanas, they're one example of people who heard about Krishna. But there are many other examples of people who heard about Krishna. One was Lord Krishna's first wife. You know, Lord Krishna had many wives, but his very first wife was Rukmini. And Rukmini... She had written a letter to Lord Krishna and she was explaining her position to Lord Krishna in her letter. She, was, she wrote a letter to Lord Krishna because her brother Rukma had arranged her marriage to Sishupal and Rukmini wanted to marry Krishna, but she'd never seen Krishna. But she had heard about him. So but she had heard about him from Narada Muni. And when she heard about Krishna from Narada Muni, she understood that this is a man I want to be my husband. And so she wrote a letter to Lord Krishna. And in her letter, she told Lord Krishna that I want to accept you as my husband, and if I cannot get you as my husband in this life, then I'm pre prepared to take birth again and again until I can achieve you, until I can have you for my husband. And Rukmini wrote this letter and gave a letter to the Brahmana. There was no email. No mobile phones. She had to write a hand letter, handwritten letter and give it to the Brahmana. Brahmana had to go there from her capital, from her palace, all the way to Dwarka to see Lord Krishna. And of course, Rukmini, she was very intelligent young woman. She was the daughter of a king. And so she told Lord Krishna, about what was going to happen at the time of her marriage. And she told Krishna, that will be a good time to come and kidnap me just before my marriage. And so Krishna, he got the letter and he did that. He went there to Rukmini's marriage. And then just as she was about to go to be married to Sishupal, Krishna just picked her up and put her on his chariot and drove off. So this way Krishna took his first wife, Rukmini. Rukmini heard about Krishna and she had, by hearing, she became attracted. Hearing, we have to hear very carefully. You know, we say it goes in one ear, goes out the other. That kind of hearing is not very good. But what is the point? If it's coming in one ear, but you let it go out the other, it's useless. You waste it. What has to happen? You have to hear so carefully. It goes to the heart. You have to let that knowledge, that instruction, the information, whatever we're hearing, it should go to our heart. And then the heart will be cleansed and changed. So there's many pastimes of devotees who heard about Krishna and they changed. One interesting pastime 
concerns a person called Bilva Mangal. Bilva Mangal Thakur, he became Thakur. So Bilva Mangal, as a young man, he was a, a poet and he would write songs. And he had a woman friend. He had a, a young woman named Chintamani and she would sing the songs which he would write. And so they became very closely connected with each other. You know, they had some kind of relationship, just like his girlfriend. But this woman, Chintamani, you know, she's a singer. And, you know, she's maybe her character is not the best. They're not married or anything, but they're having some relationship. So it happened that the Bilva Mango had become somewhat degraded in his life. And it happened that even on the day when he was attending the funeral of his father, he became full of thought about his girlfriend, about this woman, Chintamani. And he thought, I have to see Chintamani. I have to see her. He'd just been to the funer funeral of his father, but he wants to go and see this woman, his uh, girlfriend, Chintamani. And it was a terrible day. It was pouring with rain. There was a heavy storm. He came to the river. He couldn't find any boat to take him across the river because it was so stormy, so rough. But then he saw something floating on the river. He grabbed hold of it and he used it to cross the river. He found out it was a dead body. He held it, he used his dead body to cross the river. Anyway, he thought, anyway, I'm crossed the river. I'm, now I can go to Chintamani's house. And he came to her house and he found the door it was a big, there was a big gate around her house and it was all locked up because it was a very stormy day. It was very stormy. So she locked the door and everything. She was inside. So Bilva Mango thought how to get in. He tried to climb the wall and he held on to something. He thought it was a creeper. It was a snake. There was a snake crawling up the wall. He held on to the snake, used it to climb over to the wall. Climbed over the wall and he got to her door. He's banging on the door. And so she comes to the door and she sees Bilva Mango there. And she's surprised. And she says to him, oh, on this very night, you've come to see me. And she said, if only you had the same eagerness to see Krishna. And when he heard this instruction, it went right to his heart. And he thought very deeply. If only I had the same eagerness to see Krishna as I have this eagerness to see this young woman, Chintamani. So Bilva Mango thought and he turned around. He turned around and he left. And he decided, yes, I should go to Vrindavan. I want to go. I want to go and see Krishna. So Bilva Mango began to proceed to go to Vrindavan. On his way, he met a very pious Brahmana man who invited him to come to his home and take some food. So while Bilva Mangal was in the Brahmana's home, the Brahmana told Bilva Mangal, he said, if, you, if I can do any service for you, just tell me. I'll be happy to help you. You're going to Vrindavan. If there's any seva, any way I can help you in your journey, let me know. But Bilva Mango, somehow he'd noticed that this Brahmana had a very attractive wife. 
And he was looking at the Brahmana's wife. And he was thinking, oh, he has such an attractive wife. She's such a good looking woman. So Bilva Mango said to the Brahmana, he said, uh, you have a very nice wife. And the Brahmana is there and he said, anything you want, whatever you want, you can ask me. Certainly we will arrange for you. So Bilva Mango requested the Brahmana's wife, just come closer. And he asked the woman to come closer. And then he asked her, give me that pin from your hair. And she took the pin out of her hair and she gave it to Bilva Mangal. And Bilva Mangal took that pin and then he plucked out his two eyes. And he said, now I am free. He said, these eyes have been giving me so much trouble. And somehow he then proceeded on his way and he went to Vrindavan. He went to Vrindavan. Although he was blind, he lived there in Vrindavan. And it is said Lord Krishna would come and bring him milk to maintain him. And he, can, he lived there until a very old age. And he wrote many wonderful songs. Although he was blind, he was a poet by nature. And he composed many wonderful verses glorifying Lord Krishna. So how did he begin his journey? By hearing. He heard that woman Chintamani say, if only you had that same eagerness to see Krishna. And he took that instruction very seriously. Then there's another interesting story to show us the power of hearing. There was this one Brahmana. He was very poor. And he went to hear lectures. He liked to go and listen to lectures about Krishna consciousness. He'd go and hear people speak from the Shastras. He would enjoy to hear. So one day he heard when he was listening to the lecture, the person who was speaking said that you do not have to have physical things to worship Krishna that you can perform the worship of Krishna in the mind. That even you have nothing, you can worship Krishna within the mind. It's not that we have to have a big gorgeous temple with a lot of paraphernalia to worship Krishna. We can simply work, we can worship the Lord in our mind. Of course, it's very nice if we do have a big temple and a lot of paraphernalia and we can use everything for Krishna, but not everyone is so fortunate to have that facility. So this Brahmana was listening and he thought about his own position and he thought, you know, I'm a very poor man. I don't have any paraphernalia myself, but He's saying, I can worship Krishna in the mind. So he went home and he began every day he would sit and meditate. And in his meditation, he would meditate on doing service for the Lord. First of all, within, within his mind, he visualized beautiful deities of Radha and Krishna. And then he arranged within his mind, he arranged to bathe the deities. Just like here in the temple, we bathe the deity regularly. So he arranged to bathe the deities. And he, within his mind, he would go to all the holy rivers to to bring water, to bathe the deities. He wouldn't just simply go to the tap <laughs> and get tap water. But then within his mind, 
he would go to Mother Ganga, he would go maybe up at Deva Prayag and get the water from the Ganga and bring it. Then he would go to Godavari and Narmada and Sindhu and Kaveri and he'd bring water in big golden pots and silver pots, all within his mind. You know, he didn't have anything, but within his mind he thought, I should have the best for Krishna, to bring water for Krishna. So within his mind, he had a big go golden lota, silver lota, and he's bringing water from all the holy rivers, and he was bathing the deities. Then within his mind, he would meditate on dressing the deities, putting on nice, beautiful dress, and then putting on the crown for the deities, and there should be a nice garland also. And so he would meditate what flowers he's going to use for the garland. And the garland should be five colors at least, you know. And in this way, within his mind, he would, every day he would do this. Not just one day, every day for a long time. He would do like this. He would, in his mind, he'd be thinking how he's worshipping Krishna, making beautiful garlands for Krishna and putting it around the neck of the deities. And, and then he's going to cook for the deity also. He has no food. He doesn't have hardly anything to cook for himself. But within, within his mind... He wants to cook the very best foodstuffs to offer to his deities. So it happened, you know, just like you get very nice, the best wheat, fresh wheat, and then basmati rice, and then, you know, all the best spices and ghee, fresh ghee from the maybe very good quality ghee, pure ghee to cook. Everything very good is meditating in his mind, how he's doing everything for the deities. And then he wanted to make sweet rice. So he has, within his mind, he meditates on milking these very good cows. Cows who've maybe only been eating lotus flowers. They only eat lotus leaves, you see. They give very good milk. So he had this very nice milk and very good rice to make the kia. And he's cooking it and boiling it. And those of you who know how to make sweet rice, then you know it should not be too hot, right? You're cooking sweet rice. Don't want too hot. It should be cool. I remember we used to cook sweet rice when I was a devotee in New York. We had a very big Sunday program. We used to have six, seven hundred people coming. This was in 1970s. So we would cook the sweet rice on Thursday for the Sunday feast. We would cook it on Thursday and then it could cool down, be nice and cool for the Sunday feast, you see. <laughs> we, we really planned the Sunday feast, you know, the, everything was prepared ahead of time. So you could just cook the halva. The halva would be really hot. And, but the sweet rice and the ladus, laglus, that they would be all cooked beforehand and kept ready for Sunday feast. Big quantities as well, you know. <laughs> so the Brahmana, he's cooking the sweet rice and he's cooking it. But his thinking should not be too hot, right? And so within his mind, he just, you don't taste it, right? You're cooking for Krishna. We don't taste anything before you offer it to Krishna. You know, some people, they cook. Oh, put more salt. <laughs> no, you're not supposed to do that. Some bridge basi ladies may do that, but they're they're special because they're bridge basis. But in our Krishna consciousness movement, we're not supposed to do that. 
we, we cook it. So the Brahmana also, he, he didn't taste it, but he did put his little finger there just to see if it was hot. And when he put his finger in the sweet rice, oh, that finger came all red, burned. So he was surprised because he was only meditating, but he burned his finger. <laughs> and Lord Narayan was watching all of this in Vaikuntha and Lord Narayan was laughing to himself. Lord Narayan was seeing the Brahmana bewildered how he burned his finger. And the goddess of fortune Lakshmi said to Lord Narayan, what are you laughing at? What's so funny? <laughs> so Lord Narayan brought that Brahmana, brought him to, back to Vaikuntha and told Lakshmi what had happened. And so they all enjoyed to have that Brahmana come back to Vaikuntha. So how did he get back to Vaikuntha? He heard. He went to the program and he heard and he took it up. He followed that instruction. So hearing is so important for us, right? The bhakti yoga process begins by hearing. From you hear nicely, then you will chant nicely. And if the hearing and chanting is done nicely, then remembrance will also come. So they, they follow one after another. We say nav anga bhakti. There's nine different limbs of bhakti, but they begin with hearing. Maharaj Parikshit became perfect simply by hearing Srimad Bhagavatam from Shukadeva Goswami. Now, Maharaj Parikshit, of course, he's a very great devotee. He was Vishnu Ratha. He was protected by Lord Vishnu when he was in the womb, even before his birth. His mother, Uttara, she was carrying Maharaj Parikshit in her womb and Ashwatthama through Brahmastra weapon, because Ashwatthama didn't want that there should be any survivor of the Yadu dynasty to take the throne. So he threw the Brahmastra weapon at Uttara to destroy her child. But she prayed to Lord Krishna and Lord Krishna's everywhere. So he's also in the womb of Uttara and he, protected the child from the burning heat of the Brahmastra weapon. Sometimes they say the body of the child was burned, but Lord Krishna replaced the body. The same soul, but another body was given by the arrangement of Lord Krishna. So in this way, Maharaj Parikshit, he saw Lord Vishnu when he was in the womb. And that is why he is Parikshit, Parikshit meaning the examiner. He's always thinking, where is that child? Where is that personality that I saw when I was in the womb? He's always looking for that. So Maharaj Parikshit had that experience while he was in the womb. Later on, he takes birth and he becomes a ruler because the Pandavas are going, they retire. Lord Krishna departs from the world. Well, the Yadu dynasty, they annihilate each other. Lord Krishna departs from the world. And then Narada Muni had told the Pandavas that when Lord Krishna departs, then you should also retire. And they went off to the Himalayas. And they went off to the Himalayas. Maharaj Parikshit becomes a king. He's the ruler. So he, he became ruler and he's ruling and he has a kingdom and he has to deal with so many things, affairs. You could imagine not an easy task to be a king, particularly in the time of Maharaj Parikshit, because the kings were not just simply sitting idle, but they were out going around the kingdom 
making sure everyone was following their duty and keeping the religious principle. So Maharaj, Yudis, uh, Maharaj Parikshet, he even met the personality of Kali and he chastised him severely and he restricted his movement. Maharaj Parikshit was such a great king, he could chastise the personality of Kali to protect his kingdom from irreligion. But then he gets cursed. One, it, because it happened that one day when he was on an expedition, some kind of hunting expedition, because as a king, he has to also go into the forest. And if there are some wild animals who are creating a disturbance for the sages and saintly persons who live in the forest, then the king will deal with these wild animals, like, you know, tigers or something like that, giving trouble. The king will kill these animals. So it happened, Maharaj Parikshit was in the forest and he became overwhelmed by hunger and thirst. So he went to the ashram of Samika Rishi. And Samika Rishi was engaged in meditation. Maharaj Parikshit came into the ashram, but Samika did not, the Rishi did not greet him. He was in, just sitting in meditation in trance. So Maharaj Parikshit, Overwhelmed by the situation, he saw a dead snake and he picked up the dead snake and put it around the neck of the Rishi. Now the Rishi, he did not worry about this. He was not concerned about, it didn't bother him. But the Rishi had a son. The son of the Rishi was called Shringi. And the Shringi was a teenage boy and he was proud of his Brahminical birth. And when he saw Maharaj Pariksha do that to his father, then he put a curse on Maharaj Pariksha that he should die from the bite of a snake bird in seven days time. This was a great abuse of his Brahminical power. And it is said from that time on, the Brahmanas lost their power because they did not use the Brahminical powers properly. So they were taken from them. Anyway, the curse was put. And when the news came, then Samika Rishi, the father of the boy, felt very bad. He thought, oh, my son is so stupid because Samika Rishi knew that Maharaj Parikshit was a very good king and he was a devotee. And what he'd done was a very small, it was a very small misdemeanor. It wasn't a big offense. He didn't take it seriously. When he came out of trance, he saw the snake, he just threw it away, he didn't worry about it. But his son, took it so seriously, he put the curse on Maharaj Pariksit. So Maharaj Pariksit, when he gets news that he's been cursed, he thinks well and good because he's a devotee. So how does a devotee respond in such a situation? The devotee responds, he thinks, actually, I deserve to suffer more. A devotee doesn't think, whoa, he shouldn't have done that to me. Doesn't he know who I am? You know, he shouldn't have done like that. I only did a small offense. Maharaj Parikshit accepts the punishment. He said, yes, it is good. It is just. I deserve it. This is the thinking of a devotee. How to react in this kind of situation. When we, we, we accept the difficulties that actually I'm such a rascal, I deserve to suffer more. But Krishna is just giving me a little suffering. And then Maharaj Parikshit gives up everything and he leaves her home. He gives up his royal throne and he goes off to find 
someone to guide him to prepare for death. And when he's looking for people to guide him, there are many different sages, different people, and they all offer different suggestions, different alternatives, what he should do. But it was the young teenage boy, also a teenage boy, Sukadeva or Vyasa Ki, the son of Vyasa, the son of Veda Vyasa, he comes and he's coming naked, but he's fully realized. He's a Atmarama, he's a transcendental soul. And Maharaj Parikshit immediately understands, this is the person who should guide me. Why? Because he is also a devotee of Lord Krishna. Maharaj Parikshit's family, he is the seminal son of Abhimanu. Abhimanu is the son of Arjuna and the Pandavas. They're all devotees of Lord Krishna. So Maharaj Parikshit is inclined to worship Krishna. And Sukadeva Goswami, he's the son of Vyas. And Vyas is also a devotee of Krishna. So two devotees, it is proper to hear from devotee. One devotee is inquiring and the other devotee is answering. Sukadeva Goswami had learned Srimad Bhagavatam from his father, Vyas, so he can speak. And Maharaj Parikshit, he can inquire. So Maharaj Parikshit spent his seven days hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. Just simply hearing. One of Maharaj Pariksha's questions, well, his main question to Sukadeva Goswami was, what is the duty of one who is about to die? And what is the duty of all people at all times? And the answer was given, it's the same duty for both. Whether you're about to die or not, the duty is the same, that everyone should hear chant and remember worship the supreme lord the personality of godhead so this hearing process it is very very crucial for our spiritual life we have to hear and we have to hear about krishna if we don't hear about krishna we have these ears these ear holes are like snake holes. If you don't hear about Krishna, our ears become like snake holes. The snake of death will enter. We have to fill our ears with topics of Krishna. And that way, then we are protected. Then, uh, then we are safe. So we are speaking today about the, the importance of hearing the glories of Lord Krishna. Because we're coming up to Janmashtami, Krishna's birth is coming. And that's a time when we certainly want to absorb ourselves in hearing about Krishna. So we want to prepare for this wonderful festival, which we have every year, by more hearing. And more hearing means more chanting and more remembering. So thank you very much. We will stop here. We will ask if there's any question. Yes, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much for the enlivening uh, class. Only my thought what came was you mentioned that we have to look at Krishna and we have to worship Krishna in the Vipralamba Bhav. So the question arises is before the Vipralamba Bhav, one should have attachment for Krishna. And subsequent to this, you mentioned about the episode of uh, Bilva Mangal Thakur. So if you could please help me explain how the switch in Bilva Mangala Thakur's consciousness 
from Chintamani consciousness to Krishna consciousness, what are the cause of the switch? I, I probably from how did it change from yeah, the switch consciousness to, to Krishna. Krishna consciousness? So what are the switch and it, he didn't get the knowledge in the parampara, you know, it, was it enough that was it his eyes which was the attraction for her or was it his mind which was the attraction for her? What are the cause of the switch? Well, it's explained that this Bilva Mango Thakur in his previous life, he had been a great devotee and he was already very advanced in his previous life. But somehow due to material circumstances, he'd become degraded and he'd become involved with this woman, Chintamani. But that Chintamani, well, they say uh, how Chintamani became the, the, the guru, like the, the spiritual teacher somehow entered into Chintamani and spoke through her these words. That if only you had that eagerness for Krishna. And so that again brought Bilvamango out of his illusion and, and the material uh, the material games which he was playing and trying to find happiness and sense gratification. And immediately he remembered Krishna, Krishna. And from his previous life, he remembered how yeah. Actually, that's what's more important than Chintamani. So definitely there was something there from his previous life. And that's why he was able to just give up Chintamani and go to Krishna, go to Vrindavan. And the fact that he went to Vrindavan and stayed in Vrindavan and wrote so many things, that also confirms the fact that he was really a great devotee previously. That's, that's how I've understood it. Yes? Hare Krishna Maharaj, you were mentioning about the Bhaktilata Beej, so it grows, so how do we know that uh, how much it has grown? You were mentioning it is piercing the universe, all those things, and it's growing, and we are watering through hearing and chanting. Uh, so how do we know how much it has grown in uh, our heart? So how do we relate that uh, particular thing? So physically, uh, I mean, how uh, in the heart it's growing. So in what sense we can understand it's growing inside the heart? Yes. How do we know how much is growing? Well, we can understand how much is growing by how much we're developing our attachment to Krishna and how much we're losing our taste for material sense gratification. The more, we're, the more we're losing interest in the material world, that it's a positive sign that, you know, in order to get, lose interest in the material world, we have to develop our interest in Krishna. And the more we're becoming interested in Krishna and service to Krishna and hearing and chanting Krishna, that's a sign that our Creeper is growing very nicely. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Of course, the goal, we could, Mahaprabhu said, Prem Punarto Mahan. The goal of life is to develop love of God. So, Prabhu also mentioned how I'd spoken about Vipralamba Seva. Of course, that's, we could say, but well, it's very advanced. But Prabhupada encourages us. To, to cultivate this kind of mood, that we want to cultivate this kind of mood, just like the gopis of Braja. Of course, we're not on the level of the gopis of Braja, but just as the gopis heard about Krishna, we need to also hear about Krishna. And the more we hear and chant, the more we can cultivate that mood. Feeling 
separation. We should feel separation. We should feel some anxiousness to be with Krishna. When will Krishna come? We should be thinking like that. When is it? Prabhupada said, devotee of Krishna doesn't say, now I see Krishna. And Prabhupada would chastise devotees if they ever talk like that. One devotee did a coloring book, coloring book, and there was a picture of Krishna and the boy, the coward boy was sitting there and said, now I see Krishna. Prabhupada said, no, this is not correct. This is not the mood. The mood should be, where is Krishna? And when will Krishna come? In this way, we want to develop this kind of anxiety, this anxiousness and eagerness to be with Krishna and to see Krishna. So we do want to cultivate this kind of feeling. And that's the purpose of Kirtan, the Sankirtan, which Lord Chaitanya da does. Lord Chaitanya was passing his time doing Sankirtan in the, at the Srivas Angam. And the Sankirtan is parallel to Krishna's Rasa Leela. Krishna is dancing with the gopis, and then 500 years ago, Krishna comes again as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and he's performing kirtan with the devotees. So that kirtan is in, it's to awaken this mood, this feeling for Krishna, and to be with Krishna. When is Krishna coming? So. We do try to cultivate this kind of feeling for Krishna and being anxious that we want Krishna to come. When will he come? Although we're unqualified, but that kind of eagerness, that angst to be, to want to be with Krishna, then it's very good. It's a, uh, this is the actual mood which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had, and all of his followers, they follow in that kind of mood. So we do want to try to follow Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings and feel separation. Even if we don't, we should lament that we don't feel that separation from Krishna. That, you know, one man used to come to our temple. I was based in Calcutta at the time. So one man used to come and he used to say, you know, he said, I can cry for my wife. I can cry for my children. I can cry for my business, but I cannot cry for Krishna. So, you know, I thought that was very nice that he had that realization that he should be crying for Krishna. But unfortunately, you know, we only cry for mundane, material things. But the person who we should be crying for is Krishna. Yes? Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yes, okay. One more question here. Uh, Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Uh... Uh, thank you for the wonderful class, especially on the theme of uh, Shravanam hearing. Um, as sadhakas, actually, we are hearing a lot. We are getting, we are, uh, we are hearing, we are reading. And nowadays, there is a lot of speakers speaking on the online media. We are hearing. However, uh, there is a lot of struggle in really applying the principle, applying what we have heard in our Krishna conscious life. So, so just kindly. Uh, Advice, Maharaj, that how is there any systematic way of hearing? How do we uh, really uh, uh, apply the principles properly so that we can advance in Krishna consciousness? Well, hearing is one of the principles. So if you're hearing, that is also part of the, the application. It's not that, you know, hearing is just to give instructions. You have to go and do something. But the fact that you're hearing that is the basis of our bhakti yoga. So we want to keep hearing and hear regularly more and more. And gradually, as we go on hearing, gradually something, 
from our heart will be impressed upon us that we have to do this. I have to follow this. Some particular, just like I told about the Brahman I heard, worship Krishna in the mind. And so he took that very seriously, began to do it. Now, some other people, they may hear different things. Somebody hears, for example, the importance of book distribution. They want to do that. Somebody else hears about deity worship and how the person who's worshiping the deity, he's the most fortunate person, how he's directly serving the Lord himself. And we may be inspired, we want to take up deity worship. So different people will be inspired in different ways towards pick particular things. But we want to continue hearing, go on hearing, and Krishna will act on the heart. He will inspire you in some particular ways to do some particular activity. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you so much for this, for the for so much emphasis on hearing. As parents, we have many means of hearing. How, for the teens, the grow, growing up children in the teens, what should they hear, Maharaj? What should what what would what should as parents we enable them to hear, Maharaj? What should children be hearing? Well, the, the main thing is we want to capture the interest of the children. We have to make it pleasurable for them. That's important. So uh, we want to inspire the children in Krishna consciousness. We, we have to make it really fun for them. You know, the children are active and they like fun. And so you have to make this hearing exercise for them. You have to make it very interesting for them. And you have to uh, give them the chance to cultivate their devotion. You know, not the usual things, you know, Krishna's pastimes and so on. It, that's, you know, children can hear all, the, all these things nicely. But the important point is it should be, it should be fun. It should be really nicely done. The children enjoy it. They look forward to it. It shouldn't be something which they're forced into, but they should be happily engaged in cultivating their Krishna consciousness. The children are very, very important for us. They are the future of our Krishna consciousness movement. We are building these temples really for them. But in the future, you know, they won't have to worry about building temples but they'll have to worry about keeping the programs going and doing the preaching. And so we do want to encourage them very much, uh, hoping that they will take an interest and that they will feel inspired in Krishna consciousness. Um, Prabhupada as a child, he describes how he, his, his father allowed him to do Rathiatra I think it's important for the children to also see their parents worshipping Krishna. If the children see the parents do something, then the children will also be inclined to follow. It will be natural for them. But generally, children like to hear about other children. They can hear Krishna's childhood, Leela. Krishna with the cow, her boys, Krishna with the cows, Krishna and Vrindavan. We have to see what really takes their interest. What do they like to hear? And we have to do it in such a way that to make it attractive, make it appealing to them. So it's a great challenge for the teachers. No? Not easy, we you know. Okay. Any other question? 
All right, then we will stop here. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada ki. Go back to Vrinda ki. Hare Krishna. Jai Shri Jagannath Baladi Sukhadra Mai ki. Chai. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for this wonderful class, which emphasized, emphasized on hearing. We also had the Kannada translation by, done by His Grace Suvene Nityananda Prabhu. And uh, in, in terms of hearing, temple also has this daily Nityam Bhagavata Seva in the morning. And apart from that, just to uh, you know, build up the mood for Janmashtami, we also have started a Krishna book reading. That's happening every day evening at 9.30 to 9.45. So devotees who are not being participated, please take benefit of this wonderful seva that has been done. So let us all thank Maharaj from the bottom of my heart, expressing our gratitude for this wonderful class and the association that I've been having for the past few days by loudly chanting once, Hare Krishna! We have a few announcements to make. Uh, devotees are requested to have breakfast prasadam before 7.45 a.m. Those devotees are coming from Mangalarati and attending, attending the morning programs. So please ensure that you have breakfast before 7.45 so that the rest of the program, we can start the class on time. So please make a note of that. Um, Wonderful, another association, another opportunity devotees have been provided uh, in the form of yatras. So there are multiple yatras, almost three yatras that are coming up. Those who have seen those notices that are coming, flyers that are coming up in, in the WhatsApp group. I'll just, I'll just call out those yatras that are coming up with the dates. Please make a note of that. But also there will be, uh, there are flyers and messages being shared in the WhatsApp group. The first yatra, which will be on August, between August 13th and 14th, this is to Melukote and Tondanur. And covering places like Maddur, Sriranga, Patna, Melukote, Tondanur. That is on between August 13th and 14th. The next Yatra that is coming up is from September 9th till 10th, and that is Udupi Yatra. And also Murudeshwar is also included which includes all the train, local to accommodation, food. The third Yatra, which is coming up, is from 17th to 25th, and this is to Naimi Sharanya, Ayodhya, Nepal, Muktina, and, and Jharkhand Yatra. So this will include, obviously, not the local trains, but the flight. And uh, for all this, for all this Yatra, those who are interested, please contact Rati Madhuri Mataji. I am Mataji is here. Rati Mataji, she's not here. Or you can also connect with the devotees who are there in the temple, either Rukmini Ranga Krishna Prabhu or Swami Pagrash Prabhu, in case Mataji is not there. But uh, Mataji is taking care of all these yatras coordination. So please ensure you, who all are interested, please connect with Mataji and ensure your registrations are done on time. Uh, today, we do, I don't think we have Prasadam sponsors today. So any devotees would like to sponsor Prasadam today? Thank you so much, Prabhu Ishwar, Ishwar Prabhu. Sponsor the prashadam. So once chant to Hare Krishna Mahamantra for Prabhuji. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Hare Hare. This is a reminder for Krishna's kingdom classes. Those devotees who have registered the kids for the classes, the classes will be starting from next Sunday physically in the temple. And uh, those who still want to participate, have their kids registered, the help desk will be there. I think His Grace Venu Gopal Prabhu will be sitting at the desk. So please ensure you register your kids, do the registration today itself, because the classes are starting from next Sunday in the temple. Details of the classes will be, will be uh, sent over to the WhatsApp. And one last announcement, uh, th there is a meeting that is for devotees who are residing in this vicinity of the temple. Uh, and, and it was also sent as an info. This is just a reminder. Those devotees are staying near the temple. There is a meeting at around 10.30, uh, 10.45 will start. Nare Chaitanya Prabhu will be addressing.
Hare Krishna. What is the new normally celebrated in grand festival? Sri Krishna Janmashtami ki. So Janmashtami Hatra Bharatai de. August 18th. Now celebrate Martha the Larry Guti there, flyers sell like a hogi there. Nan Yak Bertha Edini and Tendre, Yerdo Varshinda now Corona Salvagi Grand Agis Janmasmina celebrate Madak Agila. Eversha Nivellaru Pidre Grand Ag celebrate Madanoa. Not a big hairy bowl. Okay. That's why Sumaru services are there. Again, this is particularly Janmashtami Dhyusa, Krishna Nige, Vasa Dressu. Ratri, Vasa Dress Hakananta, Vichara Madi Devi. Maradhyusa Prabhupada's appearance day. Avatthu Kuda Krishna Nige, Vasa Dress Hakbeko Anthali, Maad Kondi Devi. Sadhya Adre ni vellaru cooperate maadi kotre. Ekandre Prabhupada Auru, Mara Shertha Idru Prabhupada Auru, America Dalli start maadi daga, Iskan Samsthiyan stop start maadi daga, Yeshto Jana devotees, initial devotees alli work maadi, Bandanta Sambalavana Purti, Purti Aagi Kottu Iskan Samsthiyan Hutta Kirodha Nama Gellarigu Gutti Dhe. Adikke? David to Dharala Vada Manasin in the Yakandre, Krishna Hiratan Ananyas in the Yanto, ma'am. So Krishna will take care of all of us. So, very interestingly, we have put out. What is the cost? Akandre, in our Beka Giru Dino and Tandre, important to lot of devotees. Akandre, e festival in the Enagate and Re, Jasti Jana Temple Ibertare, Temple Ibundu, our Bakhtarag Beko no and Tavandase. So many Temple Ibundu, Darshna to go into Prasada to go into Hogut Kintano. Even in this, an Artha Marco Krishna consciousness, Yak Marbeko, no than Artha Marasbeko Andre, Adekani Miller Sakara Avasha, Duddagina festival and a Madidre. Yes, to Grand Dagina festival Martimi, Ashta Jana Temple Berthare. So Adeke Dharava Dharava the Manasin and the Tavilru Kuda Madabeko. Um, Sumaru Arvat Tundu Savira Rupai dress cost Agate Nan Heli the Prakara Yaradru dress gay complete Agi Madbodu Atava Ibru Atua Murjana Kudkundu dress sponsor Madbodu. So Arvat Tundu Savira Rupai Christian address Akadre now Nama Bertre Marco Bekant Andre Yestella now Martivi. Cake two tire, three tire, four tire cakes thar TV. Yes, testila ila maad TV alva. Yes, arrangement maad kur TV. Supreme Personality of Godhead, Parama Devottama Purushana vandu. Appearance down on birthday maad bhe kandre na vellaru yes, kashta pad bhe ko, yes, channa ki maad bhe ko antandre. Adhike, oh, yellaru beral kachu thara athara na ho, yellaru kudi maad bhe ko. So, Yaradru Ilikutauru, Ilidur Yaradru dress galena, Krishna dress galena sponsor Madakicha idea, Arvatundu Savarupai Manas Bichi Matari, Akasmat announced Madak, new announced Madak Agli Landru Kuda, private Agi Bandu Hair Bodu, Tundrela, sixty one thousand and eight Yaradru dress, Krishna Nige dressu. Radha Krishna, Jagannath Baladeva Subhadramai, Narsimha Dev, Lakshmi Narasimha Dev, Ivi Rallari Go Koda Dress Agathe, Yaradro Mada Kichcha Idre Devit Bani, Mundu Bani. Amele, Idi Allah Sevegalera Talma, 
ಈ ಎಲ್ಲ ಸೇವೆಗಳಿಗೂ ಕೂಡ ಮುಖ್ಯ ಯಜಮಾನ ಅಂತಿರುತ್ತೆ ಯಾಕಂದ್ರೆ ನಾವು ಐದು ಕಡೆ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀವಿ ಈ ಈ ಫೆಸ್ಟಿವಲ್ ಅನ್ನ ಈ ಸಲ ಜನ್ಮಾಷ್ಟಮಿ ತುಂಬಾ ಗ್ರ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಆಗ್ಬೇಕು ಅನ್ನೋ ಅಂತ ಆಸೆ ಗ್ರ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಜೊತೆಗೆ ತುಂಬಾ ಜನ ನಮ್ಮ ಟೆಂಪಲ್ ಗೆ ಬರ್ಬೇಕು ಅನ್ನುವಂತ ಆಸೆ ಮೂರನೇದು ಟೆಂಪಲ್ ಗೆ ಎಲ್ಲರೂ ಬಂದವರು ಭಕ್ತರಾಗ್ಬೇಕು ಅನ್ನುವಂತ ಆಸೆ ಸೊ ಇದು ಎಲ್ಲರ ಆಸೆನೂ ಕೂಡ ಇದೇ ಆಗಿರತ್ತೆ ಸೊ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಮುಖ್ಯ ಯಜಮಾನ ಸೇವೆ ಅಂತ ಇದೆ ಎಲ್ಲ ಸರ್ವಿಸಸ್ಗೂ ಕೂಡ ಮುಖ್ಯ ಯಜಮಾನ ಸೇವೆ ಇದೆ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಮೂವತ್ತೈದು ಸಾವಿರ ರೂಪಾಯಿ ಫಿಕ್ಸ್ ಮಾಡಿದೆ ಯಾರಾದರೂ ಇಚ್ಛೆ ಇದ್ರೆ ದಯವಿಟ್ಟು ಕೈ ಎತ್ತಿ ನಾನು ಮುಖ್ಯ ಯಜಮಾನ ಒಂದು ಟೆಂಪಲ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಆಗ್ತೇನೆ ಐದು ಕಡೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಐದು ಅಪಾರ್ಚುನಿಟಿಗಳಿರುತ್ತೆ ಸೊ ಮೇನ್ ಟೆಂಪಲ್ ನಲ್ಲಿ ಆ ಯಾರು ಮುಖ್ಯ ಯಜಮಾನ ಸೇವೆ ಆಗ್ತೀರಾ ಯಾ ಎಲ್ಲಿಯಾದ್ರೂ ಕೂಡ ಪರವಾಗಿಲ್ವಾ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಮುಖ್ಯ ಯಜಮಾನ ಸೇವಾ ಯಾರ್ ಮಾಡಕ್ ಇಚ್ಛೆ ಇದೆ ದಯವಿಟ್ಟು ಕೈ ಎತ್ತಿ ಮೂವತ್ತೈದು ಸಾವಿರ ರೂಪಾಯಿ ಯಾಕೆ ನಾವು ಇಷ್ಟೆಲ್ಲ ಇಡ್ಬೇಕಾಯ್ತು ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ನೀವು ಅರ್ಥ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಳ್ಳಿ ಇನ್ನ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ದಿವಸದಲ್ಲಿ ದೊಡ್ಡ ಮಂದಿರ ಬರ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಸೊ ನೀವು ಕೊಡ್ತಾ ಇರತಕ್ಕಂತಹ ಡೊನೇಷನ್ ಬರೀ ಫೆಸ್ಟಿವಲ್ ಗೆ ಮಾತ್ರ ಉಪಯೋಗಿಸದೆ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಅಟ್ಲೀಸ್ಟ್ ನಾವು ಮಂದಿರಕ್ಕೆ ಯಾಕಂದ್ರೆ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ ಮಾಡುವಂತಹ ಒಂದು ಆಸೆಯನ್ನ ಇಟ್ಕೊಂಡಿದೀವಿ ಇದೇ ವರ್ಷ ಸುಮಾರು ದಸರಾ ವೇಳೆಗೆ ನಾವು ಹೊಸ ಮಂದಿರವನ್ನ ಓಪನಿಂಗ್ ಮಾಡುವಂತಹ ಒಂದು ಆಸೆಯನ್ನ ನಾವು ಇಟ್ಕೊಂಡಿದೀವಿ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ನೀವು ಕೊಟ್ಟಂತಹ ಡೊನೇಷನ್ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಪ್ರಮಾಣದಲ್ಲಿ ಮಂದಿರಕ್ಕೂ ಕೂಡ ಉಪಯೋಗ ಆಗತ್ತೆ ಮುಗಿಸೋಕೆ ಫೈನಲ್ ಟಚ್ ಉಪಯೋಗ ಆಗತ್ತೆ ದಯವಿಟ್ಟು ಯಾರು ತುಂಬು ಮನಸ್ಸಿನಿಂದ ಯಾರು ಕೂಡ ಕಿಚ್ಚ ಇದೆ ದಯವಿಟ್ಟು ಕೈ ಎತ್ತಿ ಆ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಬಂದು ಹೇಳ್ಬಹುದು ಮೂರನೇದಾಗಿ ಆ ಸಿ ಕಲಶ ಸೇವೆಗಳಿದೆ ಬೆಳ್ಳಿ ಕಲಶ ಸೇವೆ ಆ ಕಾಪರ್ ಕಲಶ ಸೇವೆಗಳು ಅಭಿಷೇಕ ಮಾಡುವಾಗ ಪ್ರತಿಯೊಬ್ಬರು ಕೂಡ ಅಭಿಷೇಕ ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಕು ಅನ್ನುವಂತಹ ಆಸೆ ಬಂದವರು ಕೃಷ್ಣನಿಗೆ ಅಭಿಷೇಕ ಮಾಡದೇನೆ ವಾಪಸ್ ಹೋಗ್ಬಾರ್ದು ನಿಮ್ಮ ಪಕ್ಕದ ಮನೆಯವರು ನಿಮ್ಮ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ನಿಮ್ಮ ರಿಲೇಟಿವ್ಸ್ ಪ್ರತಿಯೊಬ್ಬರು ಕೂಡ ಆ ದಿವಸ ಬಂದ್ರೆ ಜಗನ್ನಾಥ ದೇವರ ಒಂದು ಮರ್ಸಿ ನಿಮಗೆ ಸಿಗತ್ತೆ ಅನ್ನುವಂತಹ ಇದರಿಂದ ಬೇರೆ ಬೇರೆ ಸೇವೆಗಳನ್ನ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಇಟ್ಕೊಳ್ಳಾಗಿದೆ ಯಾರಾದ್ರು ಈ ಈ ಪ್ಯಾಂಪ್ಲೆಟ್ಸ್ ಅನ್ನ ನೋಡ್ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಯಾರು ಯಾವ ಸೇವೆಯನ್ನ ಮಾಡ್ತೀರಾ ಆ ಸೇವೆಯನ್ನ ಬಂದು ನೀವು ಕೊಡಬಹುದು ದಯವಿಟ್ಟು ತುಂಬು ಮನಸ್ಸಿನಿಂದ ದಾನವನ್ನು ಮಾಡಿ ದಾನ ಇದು ನಿಮ್ಮ ಬೆನಿಫಿಟ್ಗೆ ಮತ್ತು ಇಲ್ಲಿರ್ತಕ್ಕಂಥ ಎಲ್ಲ ಭಕ್ತರ ಬೆನಿಫಿಟ್ಗೆ ನೀವು ತುಂಬ ಮನಸ್ಸಿನಿಂದ ದಾನವನ್ನ ಮಾಡಿದರೆ ನಿಮಗೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣನ ಭಕ್ತಿ ತುಂಬಿ ತುಳುಕತ್ತೆ ಅನ್ನುವಂಥ ಮಾತನ್ನ ಹೇಳಿ ಇವತ್ತು ಇನ್ನು ಹತ್ರ ಬರ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಅಷ್ಟೆ ನಾನು ಪ್ರತಿಯೊಬ್ಬರಿಗೂ ನಾನು ಫೋರ್ಸ್ ಮಾಡಕ್ ಹೋಗಲ್ಲ ಇದೆ ದಯವಿಟ್ಟು ಬಂದು ತುಂಬ ಮನಸ್ಸಿನಿಂದ ದಾನವನ್ನ ಮಾಡಿ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ನಾನು ಮುಗಿಸ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೇನೆ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೊ ದಿ ಎಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇನ್ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ವಾಸ್ ದರ್ ಆರ್ ಮೆನಿ ಸೇವಾ ಆಪರ್ಚುನಿಟೀಸ್ ಅವೈಲೇಬಲ್ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ಫಿಸಿಕಲ್ ಸೇವಾ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ಅದರ್ ಸೇವಾ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಬೈ ಬೈ ಇಫ್ ಯು ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಫಾರ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಪ್ರಭು ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ಡ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಡ್ರೆಸ್ ದಿ ಅಲಂಕಾರ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಒನ್ ಸೇವಾ ಲೈಕ್ ದಟ್ ಸೊ ಆಲ್ ದೋಸ್ ಡೀಟೇಲ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಫ್ಲೈಯರ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಮೆಸೇಜಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಸೊ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಬೆನಿಫಿಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಟ್ how many of the devotees have registered online into the google forms for any sevas anybody who has registered there was a form which was circulated in the whatsapp so those who are this are krishna <laughs> yes yes he is asking can children can register for a seva so wonderful thank you so much so there are multiple sevas available please register yourself so that you can contribute in that way uh, on janmashtami day
ಇಮಿಡಿಯೇಟ್ಲಿ ಅವ್ರು ಏನ್ ಮಾಡ್ಬಿಟ್ಟಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಆನ್ಲೈನ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಕೂಡ ಪೇ ಮಾಡ್ಬಿಟ್ಟಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿಂದ ಇಲ್ಲೇ ಕುತ್ಕೊಂಡ್ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಆನ್ಲೈನ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಅರವತ್ತೊಂದು ಸಾವಿರದ ಒಂದು ನೂರ ಎಂಟು ರೂಪಾಯಿ ಒಂದು ಒನ್ ಸೆಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಡ್ರೆಸ್ ಗೆ ಪೇ ಮಾಡ್ಬಿಟ್ಟಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಹರಿಬೋಲ್ ದ ಪಾರ್ನ ಟೈಮ್ ಫಾರ್ ಟುಮಾರೋ ಈಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಜೀರೋ ಫೋರ್ ಟು ಟೆನ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಒನ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಅನೌನ್ಸ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ದೋಸ್ ಡಿವೋಟೀಸ್ ಹೂ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ನಾಟ್ ಎಟ್ ಕಲೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ದ ಕೂಪನ್ಸ್ uh which by which you can collect more sponsors for janmashtami please contact aradhita madhavi mataji who's sitting in the room over there so those who have not collected the coupons in different denominations please ensure you collect it today hari krishna we'll have janmashtami now i'll request arges uh, shamanjari mataji to sing the janmashtami hari krishna hari krishna hari ಸೆಷನ್ ನಾವು ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ಟುಮಾರೋ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಎಂಟ್ ಏಟ್ ಎಂಡ್ ಬರ್